What's going on everyone? This is our Q&A series, the entire playlist for these series that should answer any question you've ever had about something like this is up here in the iCard and it's also, if you click on my name, it's right there on my channel, the first playlist that's debuted, the first playlist that is shown. And if that's not enough for you, just know that I have a lot more exclusive content. If that's not enough for you, check us out on tinybonation.net, click tutorials and get a, a more guided list of tutorials for every part of the boat. And if that's simply not enough and you just crave more content, know that I have at least 100 other videos plus in circulation for VIPs, meaning patrons and YouTube members of this channel. Now for the subject at hand, how to sail a leaky boat. First of all, I know a lot of people get saw my like hull repair where, where I use like solder, you know, like brazing rods. Um, that did work for a while. But where I messed up is, you know, that was a John boat and I took him, you know, I had this out here on my lake and then I found out very quickly that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to have a John boat on my lake because I went through a few storms, a few little rough weather transitions and I rebroke all those seams. They lasted for a little bit, but really the, the serious flex of waves on, on a true flat bottom jumbo like that re-ruptured them. So if you're going to, if you have a boat and you're going to try brazing those uh those cracks together know that that boat's like on hospice whether that boat is you know hanging on to life after you do that and that really that should probably be an electric only boat from then on i wouldn't try to put that boat on plane unless there's like zero chance of you ever hitting a wave which is likely not the case there's going to be some sort of wave turbulence of most lakes and most bodies of water and bracing would be maybe the last like option that i would really use for leaky rivets you can generally use some sort of marine epoxy. They have marine po they have marine resins now that'll generally flex with the hull. They're pretty good. The best one that I know personally is Gator Glide by Gatorheads. They make the best stuff on the market. Literally, they have they have videos where they applied it to a piece of aluminum and then they beat that aluminum and bent it around and folded it in half and the epoxy never like flaked off or crisped off. That's the best stuff on the market. It's called Gator Glide Super Slick very very nice they use it on the bottom of like uh those like those boats with a fan in the back you know that just go across land and then back on water they can go across anything they generally put that epoxy in the bottom because of its ability to be very super slick and the other stuff that is constantly used is like the glove it or coated or or still flex those i really don't know it's it's mixed reviews it's mixed reviews what you should do really if you have a leaky rivet or if you have leaks in your boat, hopefully you didn't flex seal the inside of it because then you're, that's really gonna make it substantially harder for you to ever find a link. Um, I would try and retighten the rivets. To retighten the rivets, you need a bucking bar and an air hammer and uh, you can retighten rivets. You just have to go in your boat and then specifically find out where it's leaking and circle where the leak, where it is and then go in and retighten those rivets. Or you can just retighten the whole rivets. It takes a while and you need two people to do it. But if you're really trying to like breathe new life into your boat, a boat that's where the hull's been overstressed, that's something to really look for. That's the best way to do it. The second best way to do it is using a marine epoxy. But just know that I, I don't have the utmost faith in a lot of the epoxy. It depends on how well the epoxy itself can flex with the hull. Because know that the epoxy does not expand and contract the same as metal will. Metal will expand and contract a lot with heat variations. Obviously it'll shrink when it's cold, It'll expand when it's hotter, and if whatever is bonded to it doesn't expand or contract the same with it, know that it's eventually going to like separate. It's going to shift and separate, and you know that's that's a big deal with epoxy. So the epoxy is not flexible, then it can't stay with the aluminum as it expands and contracts with uh, the temperature, and that's where I think a lot of the epoxy fails. Um, so for it to not fail. The coat's got to be pretty thin and it's got to be pretty durable. Again, again, if you're going to have to really do something like that where you got to put glove it on the bottom of the boat, that boat is really kind of on hospice. Because um, with the expanding and the, and the contracting of metal versus the sheer amount of water pressure on the boat while it's on plane, always know that water pressure will win. Water pressure will pull off anything. If enough water pressure is applied to something on the bottom of your boat, know that it's not, it's not going to last if it's not meant to be there and withstand the pressure. I think a lot of a lot of that is just not there for it. And that's kind of where I would where I'd be like if 
if the boat leaks too much and you can't fix it with an air hammer and a bucking bar, then it might be time to get a new boat. Like that could be a big thing. It definitely, the best way to leak test a boat is it actually in the water because that will give you an accurate amount of like water pressure. If you just put your boat and you fill up with water on the trailer, that is a good way to know if your boat has like serious problems, but it's not gonna actually generate enough water for your boat to leak. Generally, the, the, the amount of pressure that you can feel, like you can fill your entire boat up with water and that's not gonna near equal the amount of water pressure that the boat has from sitting in an actual body of water. And then you act, you'll actually see that. The boat in the body of water itself with like, you know, one or two people in the boat, that'll put a lot of pressure and that's where you'll start seeing actual leaks come through. But definitely, I mean, don't, don't ignore the leak test. Like a good way, like if you put, if you fill a hole up, if you start to fill your, a boat up with water on the trailer and it starts to leak out the bottom, know that those are really substantial leaks. So if it just leaks with you filling up your boat, imagine what it does when it's in the water. It probably just floods in. So know that that's like a serious, serious problem. A, a very, very big problem. If your boat leaks when you put, when you like, you just do like a, a leak test, like an on the trailer leak test. That's that's that might that boat might be on its way out. You might have to scrap that boat. Save yourself a headache. All right, guys. Thank you much. I hope you enjoyed this video. You know there's an entire playlist again. Check us out. Check us out on tvnation.net. Thank you much, people. Type lines. Whether you need information, tutorials, products, or simply connections to other tiny boaters around you, we have it all right here.